most of the animation in the 3D scene uh, are basically just some cameras orbiting around the logo. In Cinema 4D, this is what the end project looked like. Um, and I'm looking at the cameras here. If I just uh, look from the top above everything and click play, you can see these individual cameras move one by one. And when one stops moving, the other one sort of takes over. And then we're using the stage object up here. If I just quickly enable this, you can see what I'm talking about. We start at the top section and then go to the F on the right side. Then somewhere in the middle here, before the final camera goes from looking in the middle of the logo to the whole thing from a distance. This may seem like a lot just for some uh, camera animation and uh, especially when you look at my objects over here, there are a lot of things which are driving the final set of camera animations. But uh, all of this is really simple if we just uh, do it step by step, starting with camera number one. So if we just go back to our project, I want to try and emulate the camera moves I had in the original example. So the camera starts somewhere on this section on the left and that's this little section right here. So I am going to get my first camera. Let's call this camera number one. Let's look through it and I'm going to set the focal length to 80. This is the focal length which I used for all the cameras in the scene. Let's uh, go to the right section roughly and I'll sort of rotate around this. Looking at the example, the camera is tilted as well. So let's uh, try and do the same. If I hold three and right click on the keyboard, this time this is going to tilt the camera sideways. Holding three and left clicking just looks from left to right. But if you hold three and right click, and move your mouse to the left or to the right, it's going to change the heading of the camera. So the start was something similar to this type of frame. This is clearly the thing we're trying to focus on. And then we can also see the top section up here and this little section here. And uh, that's the kind of frame we're getting, except maybe this needs to be more to the left. If I just quickly play through this section again, you can see the camera is moving up and are also rotating and pointing further down. It would be very difficult to try and do this using just the camera by itself by animating the position and the rotation and so on. So what I like to do to make this easier is to use null objects as parents for the cameras. And this is how I would uh, do this. First, I jump out of the camera and uh, we can just about see it over here. Let me create a new layer actually, and let's call this cameras. And uh, I'm gonna make this something which is nice and easy to see in our viewport. And let's drop the camera into this. And now this is going to show up as that layer color. With the camera selected, I wanna hold shift, go to create and null. And this is going to put in a new null underneath the camera. I want to go to the parameters and zero out everything. So the rotation and the position. Then what I can do is go to the null and go to the coordinates. And I want to change the Z. I'm just going to scroll this up. And this is going to travel right down the center of the camera or what the camera is looking through. And uh, I wanna place this at a point near the logo where we wanna orbit around as our sort of world center. And uh, anywhere just outside the logo should be fine. So in this case, just there. Then I can take the null out of the camera, place the camera inside of the null this time and now I can jump back into the camera. Let's call this camera one jig. And I can go to frame zero, press R for the rotation and 
Over here, if we just highlight the rotation only as the thing we want to animate, we can set the first keyframe, move forward two seconds, and I'm just going to rotate this up like this. And then we can set the next keyframe. And if we just review this animation, that's what we have. It's very simple, but uh, the camera is now rotating around the point where it was looking at directly uh, to, to begin with. But this is only half the work. I want to start a little bit higher, but maybe slightly further back and a little bit to the left perhaps. And then we can set the first keyframe, move forward to frame 48. And here I'm going to move up slightly just a, a little bit and then zoom in some more to something like this maybe. I am not going to get this to look exactly like it's in the example but I just wanted to show you the techniques of uh, getting this uh, type of smooth camera animation. You can see this kind of eases in and eases out. I want it to be moving at a constant rate so if we go back to timeline, I can get the camera position and rotation, which are all the way over here. Let's just uh, open these so you can see the visual feedback when I correct the interpolation. So the rotation and the position and just linearize this. And now we have a constant interpolation. So when I play this back, it's constantly moving. And then at this point, we would switch to the next camera. So let me jump out of this and let's get another camera. This is going to be camera number two. Let's look through it and change the focal length to 80 as well. And this is the camera which looks over the F, uh, especially this little section here. If I play the preview, you can see the camera is moving backwards and it's also rotating around this section. So let's jump into this and try and position our camera in a similar way. It should be fairly simple. And that was it essentially. One thing I did just notice right now is the fact that this section on this current logo is definitely a lot narrower than the section we have in the preview. This looks like a longer block and uh, it reaches a lot closer to the main letter. So, you know, that's just a variation which happened by accident. At the risk of sidetracking this lesson, I'm just gonna quickly try and fix that. I think it's fairly simple and straightforward. If I go to the original logo, let's go to the front view. And uh, in fact, I'm going to stay in the full view mode. In the perspective view, still looking through this camera, I want to go back to the front view and I can go to selection, get the lasso selection and untick only visible elements so that when we make the selection, it, it goes straight through to the other side. Select all these points and I can basically move these to the left. And when you look at this over here, it's starting to sort of cover up part of the inside of the main letter. And that's the kind of frame you had here too. And this clearly looks a lot longer than uh, this little thing we had just now. So not a big deal to begin with, but uh, I definitely prefer this right here. Let's uh, continue with our cameras. I'm going to get another null, press shift so this goes directly below the camera and zero out all of the properties and we can see the null object is all the way down there so if we go to it, go to the coordinates, change the Z position until it's right in front of this little piece about here and then switch the way these are parented to each other. So the null becomes the parent and this is going to be camera to jig. We can look through the camera, make sure we're animating just the rotation, press R to show that. And again here, it looks like the camera was pointing down, but uh, this time it was zooming out instead of in. So let's emulate that. 
Start by setting the first keyframe at uh, 2 seconds. Go to 4 seconds and just point this down only by a few degrees and then set this keyframe. Then we want to go to the camera itself and uh, animate just the position. We can go back to 2 seconds, set the first keyframe and move this back to 4 seconds and zoom out slightly, only about this much. And then set the keyframe here as well. Quickly go to the timeline and we want to linearize these as well. Select the rotation and the position of the camera and just linearize these. It looks like this might be off just by a little so let's grab these keyframes and just move them to the left and now everything is lined up. So as soon as the first camera stops moving, the second one is gonna kick in. Let's jump out of this and uh, let's also drop this into our camera's layer. And these two cameras are what we have so far. Let's take camera number three. Also give this a focal length of 80. And this is gonna be looking from the side of the logo. And just like Fat Joe, you want to make this lean back just a little. Let's quickly jump out and get that null, zero everything. And hopefully by now you're starting to really grasp the, the concept. Let's move this until it's at the point where we want it to orbit around. So basically just when it touches the letter, and that seems to be about correct. Maybe just bring it out slightly. And if we don't like where this has ended up, we can look back through the camera, move around a little bit, and this is going to follow the movements of the camera. I think this is fine though. Maybe just bring it back a little bit. We can reverse the rolls. Let's go back into the camera, animating on the rotation this time, and uh, starting at four seconds, press R to bring up these handles and set the first keyframe move forward another two seconds to six seconds now and this is just going to be rotated to the right just a little bit and of course this is uh, all being done whilst working with a 16.9 screen and uh, only the areas which are not darkened by this little edge here that's what you're going to be seeing in your final render in your viewport you can press shift followed by v go to the view tab and on a tinted border you can set the opacity to something higher perhaps maybe something like 50 and uh, you could actually also change the color uh, in case this is easier to see around the edges where your camera is supposed to come up to and I think that should be it for this particular camera we can jump out of this let's add it to our camera's layer and I'm going to linearize its keyframes. And we're gonna move on to the last camera. This was done differently to the other three cameras and it was made to look like, you know, one camera, but uh, in fact, it was two cameras working together. The first camera is the one that you see first. Uh, it basically looks at this section of the logo. And then the second camera was the one which was at the final position, you know, somewhere back here, looking at the logo and the text. And then to create the actual animation between the two cameras, I used Cinema 4D's Camera Morph tool. So let me show you what this is all about and why I animated the last camera this way. I'm going to get the first camera. Let's look through this. Let's call this camera 4 1 and give it a focal length of 80 as well and this is going to start somewhere around here we can copy this and call this camera 4 2 look through the second camera and this is going to be the one at the final position so way out here i can zero out the x position and the rotation Let's move it down so this is in the middle. And I guess actually there was a, uh, a little bit of rotation on the final angle, uh, but only on the pitch. I think it was around 11 degrees or so. 
and I think this is a good frame. Then what I can do is select both of these cameras, go to create camera, camera morph, and uh, I'm going to momentarily switch off my layer color mode and jump out of the second camera. And in this morph camera we just uh, created, there's a control here called blend and there's two link boxes down here which have been populated by our two cameras. So camera 4.1 is at the top and camera 4.2 is in the second link box. And let me just back out here so we can see everything. This is camera 4.2 down here and camera 4.1 right near the logo. I can change this slider and now you can see there's a fifth camera which is a navy blue and it moves between the initial position and the last position. So this type of setup where we basically set a starting position and a final position and uh, animate in between using this uh, single slider, I think this is a lot easier than trying to, you know, essentially do the same animation but with just one camera. And uh, this goes beyond just controlling the rotation and position of the camera. If you had other properties that were different between your two cameras, so perhaps the original focal length was maybe just uh, 50 or, or lower, the camera morph setup would also animate between those two things. So gradually from the beginning to the end, your camera would change its focal length from you know whatever you set it up here and whatever it is on the, on the other side. And basically this applies to all the other parameters on a camera and everything is controlled nice and easily through this one single slider. Now when we look through this and move the slider, you can clearly tell this type of motion is uh, clearly not correct. You know, the logo almost goes out of frame on the right side here when uh, it should stay in the middle the entire time like it does in the example. So if I show you what I mean, the camera is constantly looking at the middle of this all the way from the very beginning to the end like this. And uh, the way to make sure this is the case is you simply just add another node to your scene. Let's call this target. Go to the morph camera, Cinema 4D tags, and we're going to get the target tag. And let's drop our null in the link box. And this still doesn't work. You have to then go to the basic tab and set the priority from expression to animation. And now the target tag is going to be taken into account. So when we go back to the slider, this is always going to be looking in the middle like this and that's closer to what we want. We then need to just get the target null and place this in the correct place where our logo is in the middle of the frame, both to the left and to the right as well as up and down. And uh, if I just slide through this again, you can see this is the correct type of animation. And then from this point, it's just a case of doing your keyframes. So go to six seconds, set the first keyframe, go all the way to the end and slide the blend to 100% and set the second keyframe here. And this is the effect. I'm going to quickly go to the timeline, go to the camera morph keyframes we just uh, created. And I want to give this curve a similar treatment to the curve we put on the plane effector, if you remember. So the first handle went up to about 9 seconds to make the animation a lot smoother at the beginning. And then the second one, I pulled this all the way back to around 8 or so. So this interpolation is now exactly the same as this interpolation, which is just going to look better on the screen when both properties um, are visible. And that is the result. Pretty much exactly the same as we had in the, in the example. The final step in all of this is to do the camera switching and this is going to be done using the stage object which is found under the floor icon and let's get a stage. At frame 0 
we want to populate the camera link box with our first camera so camera number one and then we can move to two seconds set a keyframe move forward one frame and let's drop our second camera so camera number two and set a keyframe here let's move forward to four seconds and add the closing keyframe of camera number two move forward one frame and add camera number three and keyframe this so each time you want to switch a camera you need to make sure that um, you have an out keyframe for the previous camera and an in keyframe for the next one so the switch ends up happening over two frames like this let's go to six seconds close out camera number three move forward one frame and let's bring in our morph camera which of course was made up of these two cameras but here you're just going to drag the morph camera itself and set the keyframe and because there are no other cameras after this we don't need to add another keyframe at the end and I can play through this and this is the result and there you have it in the next section we're gonna set up our final render ready to take this whole thing into After Effects see you then